Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Clovis First model again, and uh, the peopling of North America and South America. And some uh, new research has come out, and let's sort of, let's just get started. Just to preface everything, up until pretty recently, the Clovis and slash uh, Folsom complex model, uh, they believed, and, and it is true, that uh, the artifacts first appeared in North America around 13,000 years ago. Um, they, they excavated this place called Blackwater Draw, and uh, they found all these different tools that came to be known as the Clovis tools. They became the hallmark of the Clovis culture. And so this Clovis first model became the, the main accepted, the widely accepted model of the, pe the first people of North America. But there's this site now in Texas called the Deborah L. Friedkin site, which I'll show you guys the map in a second. They found some stuff below the, <clears throat> the sediment layer of what, with the Clovis sediment layer, basically. So if you guys don't know, uh, there, there are a bunch of different types of dating methods, and one is analyzing the sediment layers, or um, I think it's called OSL dating. And basically the, prem the basic premise is the deeper you go in the, in the topsoil or, or in, the, in the layers, the older the artifact in question is. So for example, if there's a Clovis artifact at a certain layer dated between 13,000, let's just say 13,000 years ago, and then below it in a different uh, layer or underneath the Clovis, they call it the horizon. So underneath the Clovis horizon, there's another tool then it's older basically and then that that horizon gets dated so that's what's going on in the in the Friedkin site in Texas right now the other aside from the sediment layer evidence there's also the issue with the actual tools themselves so there have been other uh, discoveries of of old sites that predate the the Clovis first model some famous ones are Monte Verde in Chile, uh, Chile, the site in, in Oregon, there's a site in Florida, and even Washington State, and I think there's one in, in modern uh, Pennsylvania as well. All these sites have yielded dates that are older than the Clovis first. However, um, a sticking point in that evidence was the lack of these Clovis tools, the trademark tools. They weren't, there weren't a sufficient, they either weren't there completely or there weren't a sufficient number of them, and the fact that they were a Clovis tool were questionable to some people. So this uh, site in Texas allegedly has some of these tools that either the Clovis first or the Clovis tools derived from. They call them the stemmed tools, the stemmed uh, points, or they were they came from a completely different migration of people. So it's e either one of the two. So the Clovis first model was. The, the widely accepted model. And then a bunch of stuff started popping up, a bunch of different evidence, like the aforementioned uh, evidence in, in Monte Verde and, and Oregon that I just mentioned. And then also the genetic evidence started popping up. So they did this genetic study of modern Native Americans and prehistoric uh, skeletons found in, um, in America. And it basically revealed the first movements of the people south of the ice sheets that occurred between 15 to 16,000 years ago. And then it, the other thing it revealed was a genetic continuity between these first people and the, the modern Native Americans now. So that when that piece of evidence came out, then obviously a huge puzzle was in place. And then more people started to jump off the Clovis first model. It, now, pretty much everybody's jumped off the model because of all, all of these um, new emergences of evidence. And then after the genetic studies came out, uh, more archaeological studies started to come out that were consistent with the genetic studies. So they revealed that people were occupying the Americas 14 to 15,000 years ago. So like I said, Monte Verde was 14.2 thousand years ago. Florida was 14.6. Paisley Caves in Oregon, 14.2. Um, and then Wisconsin, Schaefer, Wisconsin was 14.2 slash 14.8 thousand years ago, and Washington was 13.8 thousand years ago. At the Friedkin site, there have been many, uh, lith like I said earlier, there are many different lithic or stone projectile point assemblages 
in the layers dated between 13.5 thousand to 15.5 thousand years ago at the Friedkin site. This strongly hints at the, the lost connection between the two populations, uh, the Clovis population and this earlier one that is being proposed now. Let's get into this. First of all, let's talk about the Friedkin site. And basically what the Friedkin site is, is 104 uh, square meters of an area known as block A. So the Friedkin site is, is divided between two blocks, block A and block B. Right now we're just talking about block A. And what you see in the red here, this is what's, being, what's been excavated. So you can see the sediment layer 07A, sediment layer 15A. These are all what we're going to be talking about here. And then you can see the actual, this is what it looks like, what their excavation here. You can see the layers. You can see the, um, the, what it looks like. The top is a lot more charred up. The bottom, it seems to be pretty undisturbed, largely. So I'm going to keep this up so you guys can see uh, and keep looking because it's, it's a lot to take in. And also, um, another interesting thing in this map is this Buttermilk Creek. Um, they call this new uh, horizon underneath the Clovis horizon. They call it the Buttermilk Creek horizon or the, the layer. Um, so basically the old or the Buttermilk Creek complex. So this is sup supposedly older. This is what's proposed to be older than um, the Clovis, the Clovis horizon. So they d there was nothing to radiocarbon date here because there were no samples that would yield reliable, accurate ages. So what they did was the OSL dating method that I uh, mentioned earlier. So they dated the floodplain sediments that buried all the, all the, this is the floodplain sediment basically. Any items such as artifacts in an undisturbed sedimentary deposit such as the floodplain cl clays at the site, they're at least as old as the sediments that contain them. So that's the whole basis of this, of this dating uh, technique. And this, according to the scientists, the sediments at the Friedkin site are ideal for OSL dating because of the low energy fluvial depositional environment. So basically, not too much was disturbed. There were some floods, but after that, the sediments were, you know, they just sat there. And so there, there was very little outside influence, so to speak, that could uh, mess up the dates. So in block A, they found 70 different ages between the late Pleistocene and early Holocene. So the way they, so what they did, here's a good visual of all the different strata. So these, these are different zones and the deeper you go, the obviously the older everything gets. So they divided this into four different zones, I think. So at block A, they recovered over 639,000 artifacts, including 4,600 tools of which 130 are time diagnostic, mostly projectile points. So that's a lot, first of all, number one. So this, this cannot be ignored. This, these findings are very, very significant. And what they did was there's so many that they grouped them in four mutually exclusive zones that correspond to the prehistoric cultural periods. So the top ones are, are more recent ones. So there's, I think there's like late prehistoric, late archaic, and then middle archaic. And then there's pa late Paleo Indian, early Paleo Indian, and then Folsom and Clovis, and then at the bottom is uh, uh, Buttermilk Creek. So basically, what they found, the projectile points were in the the correct chronological order, so to speak, as they would have expected, starting with the Clovis culture with their uh, trademark tools. Also shows that there were sequ sequential occupations on the Buttermilk Creek floodplain that were incrementally buried over time by sediment during repeated overbank events over the last 13,000 years. So people stayed there. The earliest, the Buttermilk people were there. They left, and then another group came back, and then it just happened like that. The, and this is according to the the sediment data, the sediment layer. This is what they're this is what they're gleaning from that. Since burial, these zones have remained intact with minimal disturbance. And here's another visual of this, so you can see the different zones here, and then the Folsom uh, Clovis is right here in the middle, and everything beneath this. And there's a lot beneath it. There's a lot more than I thought. So they go into all the other zones, but I'm just mainly concerned with the Folsom Clovis and the Buttermilk Creek. So here's what they included, and a concave base, projectile point base, a midsection channel flake scar terminations, uh, five point fragments. These are all the different bifaces. And these, the ages range here between 
basically 12,000 to uh, 14,000 years ago. This is those are the rough dates of that of that uh, horizon. So these known ages for time diagnostic artifacts overlap with the ages. So basically they're consistent. And then what it gets interesting: 100,000 artifacts were found in the Buttermilk Creek complex horizon. They found a bunch of stuff. They found um, well, first of all, they dated them between 13.5 to 15.5 thousand years ago, and um, the deepest floodplain clays are 16 up to 16 thousand years ago, and they found very similar uh, tools as well. I don't want to get into all of it here; it would be long. But they they basically they catalog all the video. I mean, all the all the tools and all the pointed the lithic points and they catalog them and it's an exhaustive list i'll have the link in the description later but i want to get to the discussion so um in 1949 they excavated blackwater draw and then they it showed that that clovis projectile points occurred in a layer below one containing the fulsome point so that's why it's fulsome and then and then and then ultimately clovis and the dates were 12.7 to 13,000 years ago However, the Deborah L. Friedkin site dates to 13.5 to 15.5 thousand years ago, the deepest 16,000 years ago. So again, this is consistent with the genetic data that we talked about earlier in the video. This, all this evidence suggests that the earliest known people to enter the Americas were using stemmed points, at the very least. So these people likely arrived by traversing in boats across the Pacific coastline, basically. And this corridor would have been open for migration about 16,000 years ago in terms of geology because the Cordilleran ice sheet was retreating back then. So it was possible. That window was there. So that's another uh, consistency that we see. The interior corridor, corridor between the Cordilleran and the Laurentide ice sheet, basically the ice-free corridor, that wasn't open until at the very most 14,000 years ago and bison and other animals were passing through the corridor by 13,000 years ago. So the ice free corridor did not open soon enough to explain the presence of people south of the ice before 14,000 years ago. This has been the fact that people have been here before the ice free corridor even opened. This is an open and shut case. There are definitely this makes it this confirms without a doubt that there are that w Clovis was not first and that people like Graham Hancock and Randall Carlson, they knew what they were talking about when they were saying, yeah, they were Clovis versus Bunk, and because there are people already here. There are people already in Chile, South America. So how could they have gotten there? And these people have a different genetic marker than the, peop than the, than the people of North America. So what's going on here? There's something going on that is not, there, there's some missing links here that have yet to be found in, or revealed in the genetic or archaeological record up until now with the, free, the Friedkin site. The, the article goes on to talk about the lanceolate uh, point traditions and the stem point traditions and that the lanceolate uh, or the Clovis first trademark tools, they basically were an offshoot of this earlier stemmed uh, point traditions. That, I don't want to exhaust you with the details here. I'll have the whole link in the, in the description, but... I, it's really it, it could be pretty dense for the layman and I'm not I mean I'm a layman so it's really dense for me but um, it's actually not too bad of a read but it helps to have someone really uh, try to flesh it out a little bit even in the just to give a basic skeleton of what the article is talking about and some little context sprinkled in here and there so yeah pre Clovis I mean there definitely was a pre Clovis culture there's no doubt at this point. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. What, is there any other evidence that you guys know know about? Are there any other articles that you guys have have you guys read? Um, let me know, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.